Hey y'all, just want to say, a, uh, I have a weird kind of anniversary coming up next month. It gives me pause and a moment of reflection that I want to share with you guys. So August 10th is approaching and it will be the 12th anniversary of the day that I attempted suicide. Uh, which <clears throat> occurred on August 10th, 2009. Um, I was going through, I was on the verge of divorce from my wife of 10 years, my college sweetheart of 17 years, who I adored. Uh, somewhere around 2006, we started a cover band. And she played bass in the cover band. We had a vocalist that we found after a bunch of auditions and wasn't the greatest singer. We had these like ice blue eyes. And I was completely oblivious to the fact that months into the project or the band, the cover band, and they were flirting a lot, but I trusted her. I, I never, I'm not a jealous person. Uh, so it took me months to wake up to the fact that they had begun having an affair. Eventually, I'd start catching her slipping out of bed and either talking on the phone or eventually going to see him and having sex or doing whatever they did. And we tried to reconcile for, boy, probably a good year and a half, I don't know, maybe two years. Two years of trying to uh, convince her that we had something special that was worth fighting for, that I could forgive her, that it was a mistake. I mean, we were seven years into our marriage when the affair started. So if anybody ever says that thing, you know, seven-year itch, I think there's maybe some truth to that. But my attempt to get her, reel her back in, to our bed uh, was fruitless. I tried to no avail. So somewhere in there, the fatigue and the stress and the pain and this heartbreak, I said one weekend, I'm, I'm going to go see my best friend in Tehachapi, Jeff. And I stayed with Jeff and his wife. And I even got to see Jeff's sister, who I hadn't seen in years. Um, it may have been an off-putting situation because I didn't look very good. I, I hadn't eaten in weeks. I was down to like 118 pounds. And my face was all just skeleton. Nonetheless... <clears throat> Jeff and his lovely wife and uh, myself and seeing Jeff's sister for a little bit. It was uh, as good of a weekend as I could have expected, all things considered. I had uh, such a sense of shame that I couldn't bring myself to tell them what was going on in my life. Um, I wouldn't call it a recharge weekend because my battery was tapped out. I would call it like a barely keep me alive kind of weekend. But I came home after, came home on that Sunday evening as it was getting dark. And I walk into my house and it, my house was half empty. My wife wasn't there. Um, she left me a note. She told me it had nothing to do with uh, my, at the time, cross-dressing, which maybe it didn't. Um, but when I say the house was half empty, I mean like instead of eight forks in the drawer, there was four, four of everything was cut in half. Blankets, linens, pots, pans, dishes. Uh, and furniture, which in California is a community property state. So it's quite legal and it's, 
If you're going through a divorce, you have a right to half of your equitable possessions, all possessions. We hadn't begun the divorce process yet, but she had kind of decided that, uh, although she had asked me at one point if I was willing to share her with this affair guy, and I said no, but that we could work through it, um, she decided that it was worth moving out. So I remember it being 110 degrees that day. And the air conditioning was off. And uh, so now the despondency and the kind of like the sledgehammer of reality hits you right in the face. She's gone. And so I started drinking uh, a pint of uh, vodka. Um, it must have been 94 degrees in the house. There were no lights on in the house. The last thing on my mind was, it's hot in here, or I want to be comfortable. It was the last thing on my mind. So I remember sitting uh, Indian style, cross-legged, on the carpet in the living room that had been cleared out of furniture. With uh, this pint of vodka, drinking and drinking, and crying in the dark, sweating, just dripping sweat. <laughs> I sweat a lot. I don't remember what point <clears throat> of the night it was, but eventually um, I put a loaded Glock 9 up to my temple. Now, um, uh, I'm a gun owner. I, sh my daddy used to take me shooting when I was young. I have a little bit of experience with guns. I know that a trigger is kind of like a spring action mechanism. So with that gun against my temple, and being covered in vomit that I had vomited maybe six or seven times on myself without moving in the dark. I'd vomit on my shirt, my arms, my hands, my lap. I was sitting in a pool of vomit on the carpet. I had that gun against my temple and I started to squeeze knowing that there's a little bit of play before that uh, spring load mechanism engages. As if I was daring that spot. And I was just trying to get the trigger to go a little further. I played this game for probably five or six minutes with myself. I remember saying at one point out loud, um, don't be a pussy. Just pull it and end it. And all this pain and the spinning and the despondency and the heartbreak, all of it will end like that. Five or six minutes, I kept trying to just get that trigger a little bit further and then a little bit further. And then eventually, I let off that pressure. And I put the gun down to my side. And ever since that day, August 10th, 2009, when I had uh, what you would consider a rock bottom, um, I found my way to uh, mental health recovery by myself in such a way where my life has been a very slow, steady incline of building positivity and self-respect and self-love, getting myself back to a place where 
I love my life. I'm so thrilled with my life. I thrive now. I'm the happiest now that I've ever been in my entire life. And I have a lot of pride and self-respect for myself because I feel like I got myself out of that mess. After feeling like um, you've been to the pits of hell with like a voucher to prove your trip, um, I got myself out of that mess. Eventually I would face my uh, dysphoria, gender dysphoria, come out to my friends and family who've all been loving and supportive. I can't thank you all enough for being there for me. And I've honestly never had another even inkling of a suicidal thought since that dark moment or five minutes. And I make this video not because I'm sad, but because it's just an interesting anniversary for me every year for me to say, wow, <laughs> I've come a ways. I've seen some dark moments in my life. And I couldn't be more thrilled right now. My life is icing on the cake. I can't tell you how happy I am in my life every single day. Pure joy, happiness, self-love, self-respect. And I know that the world throws stuff at us. And for me, it's, it's just a weird thing because not a lot scares me much anymore. And certainly not a lot puts me in a negative space or brings me down or hurts me or bums me out or irritates me. Because it's like, um, it's like that scene from Fight Club. I love Fight Club. And Tyler Durden's getting a, his face kicked in, beat in by the, the mob guy. And Tyler just says, you don't know where I've been, Lou. You don't know where I've been. The pain you think you inflict on me with negativity or maybe somebody says something rude to me in public if I'm wearing one of my dresses. Th that stuff doesn't bother me. <laughs> Misgender me. Call me Steve. Uh, that's cool. Do your thing, you know. <clears throat> it's like it's really hard to uh, to bust my train of positivity because I I made it from scratch for myself. Uh, I loved my dad. He was a warrior of positivity, and he gave me a couple of poems. If an Invictus, I have them memorized, you know. The last four lines of Invictus go like this. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll, for I am the master of my fate, and I am the captain of my soul. I think my dad would be proud of me for how I don't let anyone or anything bring me down. And I guard my positivity with ferocity. Because I'm, I'm like a duck now. Stuff just rolls off me. So I make this video not because I'm sad, but because it's just an interesting moment every year for me to look back and go, hey, you know, I'm doing pretty good. Maybe I'm not doing pretty good. Maybe I'm... I'm thriving, I'm kicking ass, I'm happier than I've ever been in my entire life, and I'm not stopping. <laughs> I'm not stopping that train of positivity. So, if anybody out there has an inkling of any suicidal thought or tendency, please reach out to me. Please. I'll talk you through it. You'll live to thrive again. Pain is temporary. So I hope everybody's doing good. That's my story. Much love. Peace out, y'all.